is three and a half inches taller. Big five inch reach advantage for Lyles, who originally weighed in at 169, a pound over the limit, returned about an hour and 40 minutes later, checked in at 167 and a quarter, shedding almost two pounds in a short time. We'll see if that is a, a factor in any way. And to the WBA rules for this championship fight. Scoring is under the 10-point must system. There are three scoring judges. No standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. If an accidental foul occurs before the end of the fourth round, it is ruled a technical draw. If it happens after the completion of the fourth round, they go to the scorecards and only completed rounds are scored. So here at the Newcastle Arena, as we take a look at Tim Littles in the ring, we're getting set for our co-feature, the WBA Super Middleweight Championship, featuring Frankie Lyles and this man, Tim Littles. Tim Littles, born in Sharon, Connecticut, makes his home now in Flint, Michigan. As you can see, his only career loss, March 5th, of 1994, a fourth round TKO against James Tony. Outside of that, Littles has never been decked. And Tim Littles looking on as the champion Frankie Lyles makes his way into the ring. Lyles told us yesterday more than revenge, it's that his title is on the line. In most cases, the pressure is on the champion. Because, as Bobby Ches likes to say, he has something to lose. Littles told us he doesn't see any pressure here. Lyle said he'll, he'll feel things out the first few rounds and knock Littles out in the sixth. He feels that Littles' his challenger will come to him. Littles can't afford to have rounds slip by. Lyles will try to establish his jab early, use feints, head movement, angles, feeling that Littles' best weapon is consistent pressure. He says he's made for Littles. He'll come to me. So we're getting set for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship. Let's go to our ring announcer for the introductions, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the Newcastle Arena here in beautiful and friendly Newcastle, England, as at this time we present the first of our world title featured attractions brought to you by Frank Warren Sports Network, along with Don King Productions, as sponsored by MBC and Adidas. This bout coming your way is sanctioned by the World Boxing Association, the president is Gilberto Mendoza, supervisor at ringside, Dr. Calvin Inelsing. This is along with the British Boxing Board of Control, the stewards in charge, Nipper Reed and Bob Graham. Introducing to you the judges scoring this bout from ringside, Dwayne Ford, Luis Rivera, and Osvaldo Sanchez. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, working in this, his 30th world title bout, Mitch Halpern. All right, fans, here we go with the WBA Super Middleweight Championship of the World, scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first the challenger on my right and fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing aqua trunks with black trim, fighting out of it representing Flint, Michigan in the United States. He weighed in at 11 stone, 13 pounds, or 167 U.S. pounds. His record includes 27 wins, only one defeat, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the WBA number one ranked super middleweight in the world. Please welcome the fighter known as the Doctor of Style, Tim Little. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the red corners, the defending world champion, wearing white trunks with blue trim, fighting out of Los Angeles, California, by way of Detroit, Michigan, in the United States. His weight, 11 stone, 13 and 1 quarter pounds, or 167 and 1 quarter U.S. pounds. His record includes 28 wins, only one loss, one no contest with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he is making the fourth defense of his title. Please welcome the defending WBA super middleweight champion of the world, introducing the fabulous Ricky Lyle.
Once again, our referee in charge, Mitch Halpern, now to give instructions. All right, gentlemen, this will be a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Any questions? I touch gloves. Come on, touch them. So here in Newcastle, England, we're getting set for the WBA Super Middleweight Championship. Tim Little's handled by the venerable octogenarian uh, trainer, Eddie Futch, who's trained so many big names over the years. Is Frankie Lyles is handled by Freddie Roach, former brave savage uh, fighter. Uh, was born on Valentine's Day, very soft-spoken and hard-punching, very humble, personable, honest outside the ring. As Bobby pointed out, two very nice guys. Frankie Lyles, his first fight in seven months, coming off the unanimous decision over Brazilian Mauricio Amaral in Stuttgart. He's tall, rangy, he's a southpaw, he's a cool pro, actually a natural right-hander, learned to fight southpaw in the amateurs. Knocked the guy out with the left hand and said, hey, this is pretty good, I'll keep doing this. And Tim Little's the number one contender. He's a, a world-class fighter, always ready, not spectacular, but solid. And said he has no problem with left-handers at all. He's bought every, just about every kind of left-hander. No problem, he says. They, that's not a problem. He said at one point he fought five in a row, including Frankie Lyles, and he beat them all. You know, some fighters have a theory that the right, right hand down the wait, middle on, is back, the key to the southpaw. Others, the left hook, and Tim Little said his left hook is his dominant hand. His left hand is dominant hand. The hook and the uppercut, he likes it. That is not a uh, knockdown. Waved off by Mitch Halpern. It was a slip. It was a solid shove is what it was. In spite of what he says, He's been throwing that right hand quite a bit, as uh, Tim Little. I mean, we're, we're looking for the other, and he's getting throwing it with some force. The only problem he said he, he has with the uh, southpaws, and in particular the tall, rangy, lean, long-legged uh, Frankie Lyles, is that the feet get tangled up. There's a good, solid, straight right by Tim Little that sends fabulous Frankie Lyles into the ropes in front of us. Frankie Lyles has been using a reasonable counter right hook, which has been keeping Littles a little off balance, but that right hand is starting to find its mark. And you know, they're oh, 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 right oh, 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 by Frankie Lyles, looking to follow it up, looking to put a little down. There he goes. There was that counter right hook, right uppercut. It was right on the button. Uh, he said if he comes to get me, he's going to get flattened, and he did. First round. He is not in good shape. Frankie Lyles looking to finish off Littles, and there's the bell. There could be something wrong with the bell, as you saw our clock said about 56, 57 seconds. I think it was a two-minute round. It was only a two-minute round. It was a two-minute round. How do you like that? And Tim Little went to the wrong corner. He went to a neutral corner. So the argument from the Frankie Lyles corner, right, they're screaming the it was a two-minute round, and Tim Little's off the hook. Well, that right hand was bounced off, and then the left just crunches. Littles as he goes down, and he gets up in bad shape, Bobby. Yeah, you know that right uppercut, and then the right hook behind it again. He's in trouble. You can see there he's totally stunned. Another right hand that doesn't really land. Eventually, the straight left is what puts him down. Major controversy here at the beginning of the fight. What a break for the challenger, Tim Littles, who looked like he was ready to go in the first round. It was a two-minute round. Well, there's a lot of shrugging going on all around ringside. All, all of the officials, all of the officials are just going, kind of going, well, what can we do? But boy, what a big, big, big break that was for Littles, who looked like he was on his way out. So it's round two. And we certainly hope this goes three minutes. Well, they've already set up the appeal with that. And Frank Lyles gets wobbled by a right hand. Lyles is staggered. Oh, what? And down he goes, but he's pushed by Littles. WWF tactics here. Employed by both fighters. Littles claiming, watch the head. He's, he's cut already. They Littles banged heads. Cut. Little has a cut over his left eye. They Whoa. did bang right, heads. Right, 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 right. And oh. Littles hitting on the break. Time. Things getting very oh. ugly, very messy here. And Mitch Halper wants to settle things down and take a look at that cut. Let's go, Doc. Let's go. Come on. He wants to get the doctor up here. That was an accidental headbutt. Yeah. 
Wilkins. It's off the head, but look at that cut by the left eye. Okay, put it Can you see exactly where it's located? It looks like it's in the eyelid, and that's not a good piece of news. Oh, it's a low ball. And Mitch Halper has the caution. Tim Littles. Oh, this is a foul fest from the start. Man, this, what a straight. Oh, look at this. Holding and hitting now by Littles. And it gets worse and worse. Hey, that's behind a punch and two kidney punches. That was three fouls in a row. I'll tell you what, this has turned into a solid street fight, something you might see in the streets of Philadelphia. Boy, and it, and it changed by some streak of luck. How could you explain it with that two-minute round? And Lyle wow. just walked into a left hook by Littles. Littles bleeding around the left eye. Wild swing and a miss with the right by Littles as he pours in. And the grappling tactics continue. And a low blow continues. That was a very low blow. The referee did not say anything, but it was low. And right now you can see that Littles is somewhat desperate. He's, he sees and he senses that that cut may cause things to go the wrong way. He's behind on the scoreboard for that first knockdown in the short round. It's going to be interesting from here out. Tim Littles, who could have been out of there in the first round, except for a two-minute round, the holding and hitting by Tim Littles with Mitch Hopper trying to get in there and break it up. He's asking Lyles if he's okay. Intentional foul, intentional foul taking a point away from Tim Littles. You can take your time. And he's telling Frankie Lyles, you take your time. He takes a point away from Tim Littles. As this goes worse and worse in terms of ugliness. You okay? Let's go. Well, it is a desperation, no question, of Tim Littles that's causing him to fight in such an extraordinarily rough manner. These guys have met many times and had no trouble. Now it's nothing but trouble. Well, they finally uh, reached the third minute of the second round. They've got that straightened out. That was ludicrous. You know what part of the go problem butt, is? A, their southpaw and the orthodox fighter will get tangled up. The crossing from different angles. B, Frank wants to sit back and box, and Littles wants a war. So this alley oh, is on. Lyle's getting tagged by that straight right by Littles, who stumbles to the canvas. It's a knockdown for Lyle's. He's jumping around and, and running around like a colt, but is anything like a colt? He has not his senses with him, and the bell saves him again. <laughs> Twice saved by the bell in two minutes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Get through the You're trying too hard. Okay? Yeah, take your time, get your 